Hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to another super duper exciting lesson on the Let's Build It App.com YouTube channel. Uh, I really hope you guys are having a fabulous morning and I also hope you guys are ready for episode number three of the Calculator Swift UI application right over here. Uh, the very last lesson, I showed you guys how to render out all of these calculator buttons on the preview over here. So right now you can tap these buttons and you'll see that the display right here that says 43, uh, it's not really changing, right? So today's lesson, let's talk about reacting to the buttons inside of my calculator, kind of like this over here. So seven, eight, nine, six, five, four. Uh, you see the display pretty much changes every time I hit a new button. So how exactly do we do that inside of our application right now? Well, let me show you how to uh, maintain your application state through something called an environment object. And uh, I'll slowly walk you guys through how to do this one step at a time. So first of all, uh, let's kind of define our environment object here. And uh, if you are new to Swift UI development, you might not exactly know how to use this guy. So I'll show you exactly how it works right now. Now the first thing you have to do is to define some kind of class and I'm going to just call it my global environment here and we are going to subclass the observable object like so. And basically you can treat, so you can treat this as the uh, global application state and any of your views inside of your application, uh, whenever something changes in the global environment, you want your views to update as well. And uh, this guy is going to help you uh, keep track of your application state. Okay, so with all that being said, why don't we uh, define one property on here called var display and just set it simply to the empty string like so. And uh, basically this display variable is going to keep track of what's going on in this 43 here. Uh, you can see if I modify this to one, two, three, hit the resume. Uh, let's pray that the preview is gonna work for me right now. So one, two, three is right here and a four, five, six, uh, looking pretty good. So this global environment, what I'm going to do to allow this view down here to access it is to define a environment object right at the very top of my view. So this guy, you can say environment object. Uh, you can read the documentation, but it's a little bit confusing. So let's just move on. Uh, var m, let this guy be a global environment. So something strange about this is that you don't have to define it as anything. Just say m and let the type on the right side be whatever it is over here. So you can rerun your application and uh, what you can see is that everything looks pretty good, uh, pretty same as it was before. And at the moment that you have this m right here, right? So the environment, uh, you can access it uh, down below. So m and dot display like that. So whenever you start accessing your uh, environment properties, you'll see this very scary error right here. So let me just walk you through it. Uh, it says that there are no observable objects of type global environment found, and it may be missing from an ancestor of this view. So it might look a little bit confusing, but basically the content view here, this entire calculator, we need to pass it some kind of environment uh, I guess more specifically, we have to create some kind of instance. So the way this is going to work is I have my preview right here, right? It's being rendered out using this preview provider. And for the content view, uh, you can specify an environment object right here, uh, supplies an observable object to a view sub, uh, sub hierarchy. So on the right side, we just wanna create the instance right here, just instantiate it using the empty constructor. And you can hit the stop right here, and I believe you'll still get, get the error to show up in the crash logs here. It's pretty much the same error. So this guy is kind of tricky to solve. And uh, what I noticed that really helps is that if I go back to the scene delegate, uh, we have the content view right here that's also missing the environment object. So I'm going to provide it over here as well. And uh, that should be okay. Hit Command S, Command B and everything is going to compile. There are no compiler errors. So once you have pretty much all that set up, uh, you can try to resume now, and uh, you'll see your application is working right here, and uh, there are no more errors. So that's kind of the trick to getting the environment object to work. 
Uh, I noticed that sometimes you might have to hit Command Shift K to clean your project or uh, just close Xcode entirely. But uh, eventually you'll get your application to compile again. And uh, now that we have the environment display in the text right here, what you can do is you can you know modify this to be 000, hit the resume, you'll see the 00 show up at the very top there. Okay, so that's pretty good. And the last thing I wanna do here is to actually use the buttons down below. So let's hit the play here. And uh, the buttons are right here. So button, button title, 789. Uh, inside of the action of my button right here, right? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna say self.m right here, dot display equals the buttons dot title, just like this here. And uh, this is going to make it so that Whenever the environment display changes, 7, 8, 9, uh, we're simply updating the display here. And whenever this display is updated, the environment display is going to be displayed at the very top, just like so. Okay, so now that the application is working somewhat correctly here, uh, the next thing I wanna do is I actually wanna modify this line of code. Uh, I don't exactly want to access the display directly like this. And instead, what I want to do is to go up to my global environment here. And why don't we instead create a function that receives some kind of input? And the input is actually going to be my calculator button right here. And this is going to be the calculator button like so. I'm going to self uh, set self display here. And I'll set it equal to the calculator button dot title, just like that. And then finally, for the button action right here, uh, let me just clean this up a little bit with self.environment and receive the input right here. And I uh, just pump in the button like so, hit the resume, uh, make sure the application is still in a working order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Okay, so this is a nice little function that you can you know, make sure that your global environment, every time something changes inside of your calculator button, this function will handle uh, all of the updates to the display right over here. Okay, so hopefully you guys understand what's going on. And uh, now the last thing I wanna talk about is the environment display, right? Well, you might be asking, why do I need to set up this environment object? I can use a view model object instead and uh, you know, we can avoid this environment object thing. Well, sometimes when you create a view model object instead of a global environment, uh, it's a little difficult to manage the application state if you have a lot of sub view components. So I'll show you an example of this right now. Uh, you see inside of your for each loop right here, right? You have your button here. And you also see that your view is growing pretty large. So there's like 30 lines or so already. And then inside of Swift UI, one thing that you'll find yourself doing a lot is you're gonna want to refactor this code into a sub view. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to refactor this and also keep the environment somehow. Uh, basically, I'm going to cut that right here. Uh, go down below, define a new view. Let's call this the calculator button view. Let it be a view type, var body some view right here and paste all that code in. So this guy right now is currently missing the environment. It's also missing the button right here. So I'll define that as a uh, kind of a dependency right here. So this button right here is going to be of type calculator button like so. And then the environment that I need to access, I'm going to provide it through the very same mechanism of environment object like so, var m, and also let this guy be a global environment type like that. Okay, now the last thing I have to fix is this button with function, which is over here. I'm gonna cut that and paste that down below, and now the entire code is okay. You know, maybe you want to make this private because um, no one else is really accessing it, so I'll just make it private like that. This guy, I believe it needs a self right here. And now what I can do is for the entire view, the main view right here, uh, I can just simply provide a calculator button view and uh, pass in the button right here. Okay, it looks good. I might want to spell this guy correctly. Uh, let's say that, T-O, like so. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to resume my calculator on the preview right now. And you'll see that the entire application is working just like it did before. 
Uh, again, the advantage of using a global environment or some kind of environment object is that every time you create some kind of sub view, such as the calculator button view, you know, you don't have to pass any binding to this sub view component. You can access the global environment through this environment object right here. This guy is somewhat similar to a global singleton object, which isn't always a good idea to make, but uh, inside of Swift UI, uh, the Apple Swift team seems to be pushing the idea of a uh, environment object pretty strongly. So uh, I recommend learning how to use this guy. Uh, otherwise, you're not gonna be able to follow along with a lot of tutorials out there. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson on a global environment objects. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something new today. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Uh, also, the source code is available in the description below. If you wanna check out more Swift UI courses, uh, those links are below as well. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.